Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, this one is going to be our Eagles edition. I'm, of course, here with Joe Bork. First off, how are you doing today, Joe? Uh, doing well, doing well. There was some good uh, hockey and basketball action, of course, and a losing effort, but at least Benny showed up for once. Um, so there was a good action last night, a uh, good uh, day so far. It's actually the nicest day in forever uh, in the uh, Philadelphia East Coast area. It feels like it's about 50 out. I wore a heavy jacket <laughs> and I was hot as hell outside. I wish I could say the same. We're uh, bracing for our second storm tonight. Uh, it's about five degrees here and expecting another. Yeah, get. we're supposed to get snow on Thursday. It's 50 <laughs> today and we're supposed to get about three to six feet of, or feet, inches of snow on third. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, it's, uh, we're, we're getting ready for it. So it's, we've, uh, it's been interesting few we- or days here. It's been pretty cold. So we'll see what happens. But of course, let's get into the Eagles. Uh, I guess we can say drama because who knows what's going to happen this upcoming season. Who knows what's going to happen this off season. Uh, with everything getting started, March 17th is the opening for free agency and when the uh, league's going to officially pass the trades. So all trades that have happened on, are actually not official yet until that date, uh, but they're just agreed upon. And speaking about trades, we got a few to embrace probably here in Philadelphia in the next few days, if not weeks, around that deadline of March 17th. Well, it's been a few days for about six weeks now. So <laughs> <laughs> That's what player are talking about. But uh, first, let's start with uh, my favorite uh, Eagle, which uh, I'm going to, if it happens, be sad to see. But let's start with Carson Wentz. Uh, first off, what are your thoughts on the on the uh, potential trade? Do you think it's eventually going to get done this offseason? Do you think it's a lot of smokescreen right now and he'll actually be back? And uh, part two, if you believe he will get traded, or even if you don't believe it, but what's a package you would expect to get back? Um, I feel like he's going to get traded due to the simple fact of well, one, the coaching hires are so odd because you brought in a quarterback coach that knew Jalen Hurts since he was five, and then you brought in Sirianni when everyone said that was for Wentz. So none of that made sense. Um, but the then you had Wentz. It seems like from all the reports I read, Lurie's the issue. And if Lurie's the issue, you're not going to sell the team in order to keep your quarterback. It would be great if he did, but he's not going to do it. So the – that's a big disconnect there. Howie seems to be part of the problem, but not the main problem. From a lot of the stuff I read, it seems like it's the top that's the issue with Carson, not necessarily just Roseman or maybe not even Roseman much at all. See, it seems sorry, like sorry, okay, I, forgot. I read the opposite. I read Wentz is in talks with everybody except for Howie Roseman, and Howie's the problem, and it's basically Wentz versus uh, Howie. Well, then if that's the case, you then you should fire Howie Roseman. But if you want to keep Wentz, get him the hell out of here. Um, But if you don't want to keep Wentz and you want to move on, then that's why Howie's still here. I mean, the other disconnect here is I remember seeing on Twitter, which makes sense now that you bring that up, that people think Howie might still get fired, which would be the dumbest thing because you did all this stuff already. And then you're going to basically pull a Phillies and just wait a while and then be like, oh, yeah, you're fired, Gabe. Like, like, like that, that's just the dumbest strategy. Don't take a strategy from the Phillies. They're also not one of the best managed teams <laughs> until now when they brought in Dave Dombrowski. Don't, that's the worst team in Philadelphia. Better off taking a strategy from the Philadelphia Union and the Frisbee team than the Philadelphia Phillies. And probably the old lacrosse team that I don't even know if it exists anymore, the Wings. Yeah, they're still around. But – don't take any strategies from the Phillies unless you're taking Dombrowski's because Matt Glentak was a bigger doofus than Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman can bond. But you need to figure out what you're doing here. The big thing is it doesn't seem like Carson wants to be here. The only way you're going to keep him here is if you do what he wants to stay here. And it doesn't seem like the organization is in the position of wanting to do what he wants. So therefore, you're going to have to get rid of him. And you're now making it so no one needs to give you the highest value. Because it seems like he already has, like I said before, the podcast two feet out the door. So if I'm a GM calling the Eagles, I sure as hell ain't offering a good first round pick for Carson Wentz because you're already basically threw him out your door. So if that's the case, I'm going to say, well, the guy's going to just piss you off all season. He's probably going to play. He might still do stuff out of spite because he really hates your GM, which is not a good thing to have. So if that's the case, here's a second. Here's a decent receiver. Here's a late, here's another later round pick if you want it, and that's about all I'm giving you. And I See, would say, go ahead. I thought you were done. I sorry. would say like sec, go second. If a receiver like a Galladay level receiver, anybody on that field, and then maybe I'll give you a fourth. Like like I'm not giving like I, Wentz ain't worth a first right now because you threw him out the door already. 
So you go to have negotiation people say, you already threw him out. Most times when the writing's on the wall, except for when it came to Stafford and Goff for some reason, um, the the trades don't end up being very sexy, except for Stafford and Goff for some reason. That was just a very out of the ordinary deal that was made Two former first round picks sending all those picks that was not a normal deal where I'm not sure if going off of that is going to be what we get for Wentz because number one um I don't know one why the Lions think I like Jared Goff coming out of college too but he doesn't seem like he's what I thought he was and then two uh Stafford's a guy that's been in the league longer if he stays healthy has won a lot of last downs like Wentz has but his biggest thing is he actually has more consistency throwing the ball down the field where Carson has a good arm, but sometimes misses overshot or undershot. If Stafford's healthy, he doesn't tend to do that often. So I'm not sure if that's a great baseline because that trade was mostly for Stafford to go to the Rams. And it was for, I think the lions thinking Goff's the best thing since sliced bread. I think they're just hoping he can actually, they can actually turn him around and get him going where here. I think because of the way you phrased it and you're saying everything in the organization once a guy's two feet out the door already, no one's going to offer you their best assets. They're going to offer you their second or third best assets. Well, yes and no. A couple things. First, you already got offered a first round pick and you declined it. Uh, you were the one that back out of the deal was the report from the Bears is you were going to get a first rounder from them and other stuff. So I think the big Bears thing. Bears first rounder would have been where? Like middle? That would have been middle of the pack. So, I mean, again, I think you're going to get stuff that. Um, that happens. It's just a situation where you got to figure out what they want and, and figure out what the best uh, spot is to Well, see, go. I think that's the most you're getting. That's why I think the Eagles didn't accept that because they went, we can get a first and somebody. No, you're not. Because you already basically said he's two feet out the door. You're either getting somebody but, or you're getting a first. You ain't that's get- my point. They had, they had the option for, for a couple players. Um, in that trade, and everyone wants a back a running back, whether he's the right running back or not, you would have no. got a first – and Tariq Cohen, and whether again, whether that's the running back you love or not, I'm not saying he is is that back, but it's another back that everyone wants wants to have, and it's the 20th pick in the draft to answer that question. So that's about, I mean, it's a little past middle of the pack, obviously, but it's a pick that if you match up with six and 20, it's not a bad draft for a team that can use a few things in this upcoming season. Problem is we so can't draft. I think I think the situation here is where. I don't think they know what they want to do yet, if I'm being honest. Like, yes, Wentz might want out, but I don't think the Eagles are ready to say goodbye. So I think that is where you're at right now, is they don't know whether they want to actually get rid of him or not yet. So they don't really know how much they want for him yet. I think they're also going to deal with something you you saw four years ago when you first drafted Wentz, and you held back, got lucky with Sam Bradford, a quarterback. Again, I'm not wishing anything, an injury upon a quarterback, but in that in that season, you had a quarterback go down before the year, so you're able to get a lot more from for Sam Bradford because a team needed a quarterback and was desperate. So maybe they're going to play the holding game and see who come who who needs a quarterback before the season starts and becomes well, I would available. Say the desperate team is Chicago, <laughs> where if you're go if you're I think you're going to get the most out of Chicago because. I feel like Frank Wright, if he gets anybody that has any realm of anything of skill, he's going to still make the Colts pretty impressive. And so that that's why I feel like he will be fine with them, where Nagy is a good coach, but seems like he needs a guy that's a little bit more consistent in order to make him his best. He doesn't seem like he's a guy that can coach an average guy to be great, where um, Reich does seem like he's a guy that can do that. Now, Mitch did pick it up at the end of the year, but he's still Mitchell Trubinsky. So, like, you, I feel like the Bears are going to give you the best, and they also might not keep them, are going to give you the best asset where Cohen's another risk. Like, he's basically a younger version of Sproles, but has the same injury risk as Sproles did at the end of his career. So that's why trading for Cohen is a big risk to get with a first where the reason I think the bears are giving him up is they know they don't need him anymore. He's a guy that doesn't necessarily fit in with the system. Nagy's doing anymore. They have other backs that they think they can draft or whatever, probably that can do similar or pick up from the free agency and probably stay healthier. So I think Cohen's more of a throw in, honestly, it's yeah. more like here's a little thing to sweeten the pot type thing. And that's about it. Unless if you can keep them healthy, get them on a good regimen and everything that keeps them healthy. Like the Dodgers were able to do with chase, 
as a baseball analogy, when he went there, he stayed healthier than he did with the Phillies. They figured some regimen out to make him platoon. And then when he had to start for injuries, he actually stayed healthy somehow. So if you're able to figure that out, then you'll be good. And that's the big thing here. I think you have to figure out health wise, how you're able to keep a Cohen healthy. If you're going to trade for him, you can't overtax him. And I think the one thing I do think Sirianni is probably much better than Duggett doing is not overtaxing one running back per game and just going to one guy when you have four pretty decent deep people on your team. That's what I think her actually do better at. If you would probably see Sanders, you probably see, I don't know if we're still, if we have Clement, you probably see Clement some and you probably see Cohen some, so you can give Cohen and Clement rest because they're both injury prone. So you can put one in for some plays, you can put another, they can kind of do the same flex back type thing. So, I would say that wouldn't be a bad move. You just have to run the system right so neither gets injured. And having Cohen would help that. So right now, I think that's the best trade you're going to get. A first from the Bears and Tyreek Cohen. Unless we get a receiver from the Bears, you could also ask them, hey, would you give us one of your receivers? Not going to get one of the best receivers, but you could ask them if they'll give you one of their good up-and-comers if you think Sirianni can make him actually into what you want him to be. See, here's the question. Here's the thing. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that could be facing desperation for a quarterback once it happens. You're looking at potentially they're expecting around. You could potentially see 18 different NFL teams with a new quarterback next year. Uh, and that's why I think the Eagles do have an advantage is you're going to have a lot of quarterbacks on the uh, a lot of teams looking for a quarterback, not necessarily big time quarterbacks being on the free agent market where you can replace them. It's more of. Ken, is Phil Rivers probably going to retire? Is Drew Brees probably going to retire? Could Ben Roethlisberger maybe retire? You're looking at all potential guys stepping down from the league. I'm not saying any of them are. Obviously, we have no idea if they are, but there's potential. There's talks around them. So you're looking at possibly, potentially those kind of guys. So are they going to ride, want to ride with who their backups are, or do they want to go get someone? You have the Patriots who already said Cam Newton won't be back next year. So I don't think they're going to ride with Jared Stidham. So we'll see what they want to do. Is Washington going to run it back with the, the group they had last year who – We've seen a lot of different injuries, and I would sit here and say you don't want to trade a quarterback inside your division, but if you look at past history, we did that with Donovan McNabb trading him to Washington. So that's obviously going to be a possibility. Is Denver going to run, run again with Drew Locke? In that situation, people, I know, I, who knows if they want to go with him. We all know the Raiders. I mean, we talked about this before the podcast. They don't seem to like Carr. We're not saying he's not a good quarterback. Obviously, he's had good stat-wise, but it doesn't seem like they go hand-in-hand with Gruden. So is that a quarterback that's going to be not? Well, here's a question. That's where I think the Eagles have a lot of advantage. Would you trade West to get Carr? I would say something else. I would be okay with that, honestly. I I mean, I think you have to ask for something else as well. But you're in a situation where they're both wanting out. I think the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to ride with Carr or do you want to ride with Hurts? And that's where... That's where it's going to be a debate because I don't think you're going to solve the quarterback drama by making that kind of trade because I think you're going to have the same thing here with between Carr and Hurts. And is Carr going to want to compete? Probably not. So, you know, you might upset Carr in that sense. So I think the only reason why I would kind of hesitate with that trade is because I don't think you're fixing your current drama situation. I think you're just creating it with another name here. And I'm not saying Carr's bad personality-wise or anything. Please don't put that in my mouth. I'm just saying – you're not having a lockdown starter, and I'm sure Carr wouldn't want yeah. that in his eyes. So maybe you make it a three-team trade, and you have Carr kind of go somewhere with Wentz going to uh, the Raiders, and then you have Carr going, going to maybe the Patriots. I don't know. Just throwing out a team. But have that situation. Uh, who knows what the situation, obviously, with Watson. They're going to be looking for it. I don't yeah. think you're getting Watson back, but maybe that's a destination for Wentz, depending on where Watson goes. And now, I mean, they don't have any picks to offer us. So I don't know. Yes, yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know what they would do. They would have to offer us. Uh, and then J.J. Walk out release, so you can't offer us yeah. J.J. Uh, I, I will say this real quick. On a side note, stepping away from the Eagles real quick, I think uh, an interesting trade, if Russell Wilson's as unhappy as reported and they have to move on from him, I think a, an interesting trade, just one for one, hand on, on hand, would be Wilson for Watson, kind of giving them new destination, new life on a new place. And uh, again, obviously Houston's had some situations there, so maybe it's not the best for Wilson, but it would be an interesting just one for one swap almost, maybe something else. Part yeah, of I'm not sure how that would work for Ru- I mean, I would not, Deshaun would be a little bit. Well, the other thing is they don't, Russ has talked about how they don't necessarily support him with the line. So I'm not even sure how much Deshaun would love Seattle. <laughs> um, like that might be a situation where at first they both like the new scenario and a year later, they're like, get me the hell out of here. <laughs> like, um, so that would definitely be an interesting one. It could work one for one. I'm just not sure how long they would stay in 
uh, either place. The difference is, though, Deshaun already put up MVP numbers with an absolute dog trash team and a managed team that was managed worse than if Dumb and Dumber were managing them. <laughs> so um, if he's able to do that, at least you got Pete Carroll and a much better staff there to guide you along in Seattle. And you also have DK Metcalf and other wide receivers that are actually worth a damn compared to the people on Houston after DeAndre Hopkins left. So... Uh, you definitely have more skill there in order for him to flourish. Now, Russ, Russ is probably going to have to do literally the same exact thing he did in Seattle for all these years in order to make Houston relevant whatsoever because they're absolutely in a dumpster fire right now. Same thing as a Cohen if we went with the Bears is really Miller. And Anthony Miller, if I'm not mistaken, also has had injuries. So he's a guy that has some skill but has injuries because there's absolutely no chance that they're going to. I would be shocked if the Bears came to us and were like, yeah, we'll give you Allen Robinson because I'd be like, wait, what? Wouldn't that be funny? That would not, that would not help the win situation. It goes from batter series to Allen Robinson and getting rid of Allen Robinson not being yeah. able to but I think we've talked about, or I guess in a quick short answer, when would, do you foresee this trade happening? Because it sounds like you think he's out the door. Do you see it within the next week? Um, I mean, when's his bonus? Or did he I, think, I think March 17th is when the league thing happens. I think they're going to want to trade him before his bonus. Now, the thing with Wentz is, compared to Ertz, you haven't heard as much. It's going to happen in a couple of days. It's going to happen in a couple of days. And then it's two weeks later, and you're like, well, okay. Um so I feel like with Wentz, it's hard to gauge. I think it might be easier to gauge with Ertz just because you're kind of going off of your own opinion. Not a bunch of people telling you it's going to happen in a couple of days and three weeks later, nothing happened. Um, so I would say probably within the next week, like I was saying on Twitter before, I thought it was going to happen by Friday. Then I said by the end of the next week, and it's just not happening. So, um, which also shows dysfunctionality in my opinion, where I think it will happen in, I would say five to seven days. I'll give it a five to seven day. Okay, perfect. Now move it. We're gonna move on to the the Zach Ertz situation. Is, I mean, we go back to the end of the year, end of the season, last game of the season against Washington. Obviously, the Eagles dropped that game, and, and you're looking at afterward. We had the three players in uh, Jason Kelsey, Zach Ertz, and Carson Wentz kind of sitting out there and talking for a very long time, and it kind of foreshadowed what was gonna come this off season. Obviously, we still expect uh, Wentz to be traded here. Uh, I think obviously we just both agreed on that, and then. Here, now you're sitting in a situation with Ertz where in his post-game, or not post-game, his end-of-the-year press conference, it pretty much seemed like he played his last Eagles game, last game with the Eagles. You saw him tear up a little bit and uh, get a little emotional in that sense. And, again, I'm going to thank him for everything he's done here. I, I think it's been an incredible uh, career here with the Eagles, and it, it's a shame it's got to end like this. And kind of the same thing with Wentz, kind of pushing him out in, in a way. And I think – you're kind of coming to that, and then in lot, it's been a quiet kind of talk with Zach Ertz up until the last couple of days. You had the, the news come out that he could be on the way out. Whether it's going to be he's going to be thrown into a, a deal with Wentz, which I think is the if they both move on, I think that could be the best for both of them. You kind of get a, a guy you know well, and obviously Wentz is get the best Ertz has been always Ertz has always been a Wentz favorite. Uh, it seemed like when they were on the field, so I wouldn't surprise me to see that situation happen, uh, but. Uh, first off, or I guess really, this trade haven't had much. So I think you can, we can't predict when it's going to happen. So my question to you would what what would your bet- return for uh, Ertz be? Would you expect a first for Ertz? If it was solo, yeah, I actually think you have a better chance of getting a first for Ertz than you do for Carson because Ertz has been healthier and a more consistent tight end at his position due to his health, not much else. Um, when and even when he comes back from an injury, he tends to be still the same consistency. Where with Carson. This is the first year we saw it seemed like his injury might have caught up a little bit. And now next year he'll bounce back again, maybe after the year of trying to play catch up like Gostas Bear was doing for the Flyers for a while. But I think um, because of that, you get less value where because of Ertz playing still to the same level of being basically you got, I don't know, like Kelsey Kittle and maybe one other person. And then you have Zach Ertz. You, you have one of the top either three to five tight ends in football where Carson, I don't think most people will call him one of the top three to five quarterbacks due to his health risk. You have to be able to, the best asset is availability, where I think 
you're going to get um, a good three top three to five of position value for Ertz, which is a first round pick where Wentz is probably more towards the 10 tier, five to 10 tier because of his health concern. So uh, if he performs like he did, obviously, two years ago and not last year, if he performs like he did last year, he's about 22nd. But you, you, um, you have to be able to assess what you get for these guys based off of where they're at ranked in position. That's also something I'm concerned with how Howie is going to do. Um, but I think with Ertz, you can get a first for him for sure. You also should be able to potentially, the Bears offered you a 20th. If you're, if you're trading for potentially the third or fourth best guy at his position, you might be able to get a 15. So there's also that, especially for a team that might desperately need a tight end. You probably could get more middle ground pick for an Ertz, where Wentz, I think your highest is going to be in the 20s because it's an injury risk. Way more than Zach Ertz is, where Ertz has battled through injuries and still performed like one of the best tight ends. And uh, Wentz did that at first, and then it seems like it's a thing that caught up, where Ertz just seems to keep going without it catching up. And, and not everybody can do that. I'm not blaming Carson for it catching up. Most people have their injuries catch up to them. It's just other guys, for some reason, don't. It's just they get injured, they come back, and they're just Adrian Peterson. So like that, that kind of seems like what Ertz is at tight end. So I feel like you'll get a little bit more value for him in terms of you get a first, you'll probably be like five picks up, you get a middle. And then if you trade him in the same trade, you're going to get a lot more value where, like you said, that might be the best way to go. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it depends on where he goes. I think it depends on what it is. If it's just Ertz, just Wentz, Wentz and Ertz. I think if if they both go to the, let's just say the Colts, because that's been the hottest talk for both, to be honest, with Frank Wright being there. If we're getting rid of them both, I fully expect to get pick 21 back in return. Uh, maybe I'm being greedy, but I think that's a realistic uh, asking price, at least, uh, to get pick 21 in their first rounder this year back. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say I want two first rounders. I think, uh, I mean, they both kind of had their injury history. I mean, Ertz missed some time last year, so I think we do got to remember that. But I think uh, 21 is reasonable, maybe a, a player – I don't know what their linebacker situation is, but if you can improve your linebacker core, maybe in that way you get first rounder, a linebacker, and something maybe like a late. No, no, no. Alex Singleton is the answer. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, he had a, he had a good year. No, he did it, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's more than one linebacker. So <laughs> yeah, you do need more than one. Devon Taylor is only a special teams player. It seems like the guy you picked last. Yeah. So you definitely need another linebacker. We need more than one linebacker. The problem is uh, if the Eagles realize that. Um, no, I don't know if they do. I think they literally – they've already had a report that they talked about Alex Singleton already um, basically being told that he's going to start next year, which I think is the right decision. But the, but the problem is you might want to actually have somebody else other than Alex Singleton so he's not running and basically playing left, middle, and right linebacker at the same time because everyone else blows. So like that, that would probably be a half-decent idea. So as we kind of move on here and kind of final thought – spot here final question as we hit the 20 a little over the 20 minute mark here we my, my question to you here after we just talked about Wentz and Ertz and whether they're both here uh come next season or whether they're both gone uh, as we get set for the March 17th spot uh here with the turnover into the off season, what is the area of the team you expect this team uh, it's not even going to expect what's the area of the team if you were the GM that you're going all out to, to try to improve this off season? whether it's via the draft, which we'll do our preview for the draft in the next coming weeks, or via free agency, not even really specific names. If you want to give me names, it's fine. But what positions do you think this team needs to address the most important? Um, yeah, names I'll do more in our free agency. We'll do a free agency preview too, and I'll get more in-depth on names. Position-wise, it seems like you would be wise to get a, another safety with the way we we'll want if McLeod is coming back off an injury too. You don't want to bank on a guy coming back in his full form right after coming off of an injury like that. So I think getting a safety would be helpful. Obviously, you need more cornerbacks also. So the both, basically the secondary, that's just an easier way to put that. Help out the secondary, help out the linebackers, and I think third has to be wide receivers. And that the, all that's kind of tied, though, because the Eagles desperately need all three of those things. Uh, so I would say all that's kind of even, but that would be the three things. Uh, I would definitely go for where if you put one at one, just because you tend to be able to, at least in the regular season, you're not going to win the Super Bowl probably, unless if you're the Chiefs, um, if your defense gives up a bunch of points and you have to come back. But if you want to actually be an exciting team in the regular season, you probably should prioritize receiver and then go linebacker and then go secondary. Because next year, 
with the, how much this team needs to add, I don't see us being Super Bowl contenders. So, so you could be a playoff contender, but I don't definitely don't see us being Super Bowl contenders. So, you have a year, two, three, whatever it is, window to add people that work well to build the next Super Bowl contender. Where that's what I would start doing this year, because unless if you pull a rabbit out of a hat and have Houdini come back from the dead and bless your team, I don't think you're going to be a Super Bowl contender this year. But you could sneak in if you make the right moves. Singleton improved, or Singleton's done his best since coming here. McLeod's looked good, obviously, and is one of the guys that really likes the um, organization and hasn't really complained about it ever. Getting rid of Malcolm Jenkins is one of the dumbest, dumbfounding things you ever did in your life. Um, so that affected our secondary a lot. You got to bring in someone that's more of a leader again, because McLeod was out for a whole season. Some of the new cats that are in there, the young guys that stepped up a little bit that you might like to keep around as depth, don't even really know much about McLeod because he was out. So you might want to bring in a, him to be a leader coming back. And you want to bring in another leader that's kind of a Jenkins, not as good as Jenkins skill wise. Those guys are hard to get. Don't get me wrong. But like personality wise, if you can get somebody, great. But, like, personality-wise, you should get someone that has that bulldog, that leadership mentality, kind of rallies the troops like Cox does with the line in the secondary again, and that should probably help to motivate you. You also should try to get a receiver that's the same way because, uh, no offense, Alshon, but you ain't a leader. So that's the reason why I would try to get somebody like that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think um, I'm going to lean – towards linebacker a little bit over secondary uh again i like what singleton did toward the end of the year but i think it, it goes a little deeper than that i think the secondary got banged up a lot last year so if you're able to get some of those guys back i still want to improve the secondary yeah, i don't want I think, marcus Epps as a starting guy in my secondary consistent i think the linebacker is a little bit more than the secondary just because of uh the guy some guys you are going to get back this upcoming season uh and then uh, it kind of all depends on, on where you want to go and, and depends on how much money you're willing to spend this off season as well. Uh, I, I think there's a, a lot of different wide receiver name options at the free agents level. So if they're planning on going all in on money wise and you want to sign a couple free agent, maybe you draft a Mika Parsons instead of a receiver at six. Maybe that's what you do. There's also uh, the, the kid from Alabama, uh, 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 Patrick Sir, Sir Tom, uh, Sir, Sir from, Tom. uh, from Alabama at the corner, so maybe you go that way. Because there are, and I'm just going to give the wide receiver a couple names real quick. A couple guy, or one guy we actually already mentioned here, so I don't think you actually traded for him, is Allen Robinson. He's a free agent, so maybe you go in a bidding war and try to bring him in here. Or T.Y. Hilton, maybe you try to bring him here. Or uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, try to get him. Those are some names that obviously would improve our wide receiving core uh, if you're willing to go in on him. Even a Marvin well, so Jones. Juju I, might not be that hard because all he has to do is move down an interstate. So if the Steelers exactly. don't want him much anymore, like, he literally just has to move down an interstate. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's some names at the wide receiver position. Uh, I mean, again, all kind of depends on how the draft flows, too. You might be all in on a Devontae Smith or a Jamar Chase, Jamar, but if they're, both, yeah. if they're mo- both gone by six, there's nothing much you can do. So I think it kind of all depends on the flow of the draft, or I guess free agencies before the draft as well. So it's a, situ- it's a tough situation. They obviously have their hands full this offseason. I'm interested and nervous to see how it plays out. I'm also excited to see what kind of comes about of it. Hopefully we can be excited going into the next season. But I think I'd go wide receiver, linebacker, and then secondary would be my top three uh, going into this offseason. But to wrap the show up, do you have any final thoughts here before we uh, get going? No, all I had to say is um, we're if Wentz gets traded, obviously change the pot. That's why we call this the Eagles edition instead of Wentz wagon. Uh, so <laughs> we'll change that as time goes on. Uh, tell us if Hertz becomes a quarterback. What do you think about bring bring on the Hertz? Uh, let us know in the comments section. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Yes, thanks for uh, checking out another Eagles edition with uh, Andrew and Joe here. Uh, For Andrew and Joe, this is the end of the show, and uh, please continue to check out all of our other work, whether it's Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, or Flyers. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great day.